I was born in Vietnam and and so coming into this country not wanted is very hard, right? And I grew up Catholic. It's um, it's kind of all I knew. I remember sitting in the pews and we're not allowed to talk. You basically be seen but not heard is, is how we grew up in church. And we had to be there. There was no choice. And I truly did have to walk a mile to get to church. And I just remember sitting in church quietly, just looking at the all of the paintings and how it felt so scary, not really understanding why that happened to this man named Jesus. Like really didn't truly understand it other than the fact that, you know, we had to we had to be afraid. And for the longest time I I disconnected with with my church and just kind of was lost. I've always felt like I'm in, an insignificant person, like hidden, because I was really just dismissed. And my my role was to blend in and not be noticed, to avoid any type of bullying or what have you. Just living life and, and you know enjoying my children and, and until I got to a point in my life where I really felt lost. So I was diagnosed with cancer on my 39th birthday. In my life at that point, my my kids were teenagers. I had just got remarried and that life was really really good. And then I got diagnosed with uh, head and neck cancer. It went immediate to. You have to get a feeding tube, you've got to do these treatments, you may lose all your teeth, you're going to lose your hair, like all of this stuff. And like my world just spun for most of my life. It's just like, you know, I just got to figure out how to do it. And so I did it, but I did it alone. And that was the hardest part. My husband at the time wasn't able to really understand how to be supportive. I didn't have faith. My children were perhaps scared. So it was kind of like, it was my own journey. And I remember thinking, why am I doing this? Like, what's the point? You know, like I could understand why people give up. And then sadly, my, my marriage ended. And I think it was a lot to had to do with because of my illness. And then I was lost again, kind of like, okay, I survived this, now what? I always, I had faith, like I always believed. I just didn't think, I just didn't think I was important enough. Because I always thought, why am I being put through all of these challenges, like literally brought to my knees? I met Steve and Steve had shared that he, um, that he was a Christian and his faith in God was, was secure and real. And I had said, um, I'm not, is that, you know, is, is that going to be a problem with our developing relationship? And he said, no, not at all. And so he, he just asked me, he said, I'm thinking I'd like to try and go to uh, Faith Church. Would you care to join me? And I thought, okay, you know, why not, right? And the moment, the moment I stepped into Faith Church, the, honestly, like, I was like, this is nothing that I expected it to be. And I just thought, this is it. This is it. Like when you're listening to Pastor Doug speak in the music and like, I was like, this is not what I had imagined at all. Steve had said, there must be something more we can do here because we were enjoying it so much. And, but for me, I'm just like, ooh, people like I can come and go and when I'm comfortable around people I'm, I'm pretty vibrant but just taking that step over and saying hi can we join no not me I don't know anything about the Bible really other than you know you go to CCD but will they judge me if I don't know anything about the Bible I worried about that and, and he was just like no I don't think that's how it's going to be and so Steve connected with Pastor Matt about small groups. Pastor Doug had suggested that they had room and if we would be interested in joining. I was nervous, I didn't have my own Bible. Steve had shared um, an extra Bible with me. You know, I was quiet. I, you know, just kind of taking it all in. Um, but everybody was just so welcoming and lovely and I didn't feel like an outsider, which was super important. 
I enjoy everybody's sense of humor. I enjoy how everybody cares for one another. I enjoy that everybody has something really valuable to say and are so respectful to one another. I look forward to the laughter every week we get together. And when we don't, I really do miss it. And everybody, everybody that has come and gone through our small group has had an effect on me that will last a lifetime. Being in small group has really opened my world with my relationship with God. I don't feel lost anymore. I don't feel alone. I find myself talking to God more than previous, you know, just in my everyday conversation. Um, and I really do feel like because I've opened up my heart more to God that I feel Him more. Being part of the small group really, really actually just helped me grow in my self-confidence because, I, again, these people just, they hear me, they see me, they care about me. So I feel like if I ever have to go through something as hard as I did, I will have friends who will be there for me. If I got sick again, I wouldn't be alone. I wouldn't be alone. I know a lot of people worry about that, and they fear that. And now I don't have to. And that's a life changer. Life changer all the way. My name is Catherine, and this is my small group story.